Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. I've recently uploaded a new video that shows how long Sword feels without playing with Hitlock, but I noticed that many of you don't know what this Hitlock means, and what it changes between using it and not using it. So I decided to do some in-depth research on this topic and make a video about it. Before starting with the explanation and all, I have to immensely thank DDL Noor for his huge contribution in providing me a large amount of data that he data mined himself on both Iceborne and Rise. Without his help, this video would have taken much longer, so I'm really thankful to him. Ok, let's start! What is Hitlag? Hitlag, or Hitstop as somebody calls it, is a tool largely utilized by video game developers to simulate a contact that happens between objects. In our case, it's to give the impression that your weapon hits the monster, and so the hit connected. In order to feel the impact of your weapon when hitting a monster, the weapon itself freezes for a certain amount of time at the moment of touching the monster. This is hit lag. There is something really close to the concept of hit lag, called hit slow, that instead of freezing the weapon when it hits the monster, it simply slows it down by a certain multiplier close to zero. In this way, the feeling is almost the same as hit lag, but the weapon doesn't freeze, it's just heavily slowed down by the impact. To put in other words, every move has its motion speed, and when the blade hits the monster, this motion speed gets multiplied by a speed modifier that can either be zero, and so we call it hit lag or hit stop because the animation freezes, or it can be a number between zero and one and we call it hit slow because the animation is slowed down. To figure out the hit lag system in Monster Hunter World Iceborne and Rise, we need to consider the hit response value. This is, put simply, the hit zone value multiplied by the sharpness modifier. The hit zone value is the number that tells you how much of your damage the monster will take if you hit a specific part of its body. So the weak spots have higher hit zone values because you deal more damage if you hit them, Think for example of the head of Raffian, while the hard spots have lower hit zone values because you deal less damage when hitting them. Think about Raffian's back. The sharpness modifier is a number that changes depending on the color of the sharpness. Green sharpness is 1.05, blue is 1.2 and white is 1.32. This number is in fact a damage multiplier, because the higher the sharpness modifier, the higher the damage you will deal. Now, if we multiply the hit zone value with the sharpness modifier, we get the hit response value. This number plays a key role when it comes to determining the color of the damage numbers displayed on screen when hitting a monster, and thus the resulting hit lag. There are two different damage number colors that can appear on screen when you land a hit on a monster in both Iceborne and Rise. White and orange in Iceborne and yellow in Rise. This color differentiation is directly connected to the hit response value and so with the resulting hit lag. The system classifies the hit response values into four classes. From 0 to 24.99, from 25 to 44.99, from 45 to 65.99 and lastly from 66 onwards. This is also exactly how the damage numbers colors are divided. From 0 to 24.99, the damage numbers color displayed will be white and the weapon will bounce. Same color from 25 to 44.99, but this time you will not bounce. From 45 to 65.99, it will be yellow, and the same color will be displayed for a hit response value of 66 or higher. I bet many of you thought that yellow damage numbers are displayed when you hit the weak spot, but that's not always the case. In fact, if you have a really low sharpness, you can get white numbers on a weak spot and even bounce on it and activate weakness exploit at the same time. I know this sounds incredible, but yeah, if you have red sharpness and a hit some value of 45, you can activate weakness exploit and bounce at the same time. In fact, this skill is only related to the hit zone value, and it activates when you hit a monster body part with hit zone value of 45 or higher, no matter your sharpness being green, yellow, orange or even red. A weak spot will remain a weak spot even if you bounce. 
Have you ever asked yourself why sometimes the same body part you hit gives sometimes yellow numbers and sometimes white numbers? Now you know the reason. It's because of the hit response value. Let's make another example. Let's take a look at the dummy in the training area in Rise. Depending on the body part you hit, you have different hits on values, and so different hit response values. If we hit the leg in blue sharpness, the number displayed is yellow. But if we try to do the same with green sharpness, the number becomes white. Why is that? The sharpness modifier and thus the hit response value changed. In the first case, with blue sharpness, we have a hit response value of 48, which comes from 1.2, the blue sharpness modifier, multiplied by 40, the hit some value, which belongs to the third class whose numbers are yellow. But in the second case, we have a hit response value of 42, which comes from 1.05, the green sharpness modifier, multiplied by 40, the same hit some value which now belongs to the second class whose numbers are white. Now, you might be wondering, why did you talk about damage numbers colors? What does it have to do with hit lag? Well, I decided to talk about the colors so it will be easier to understand the hit lag explanation that follows. Instead of saying the respective classes, I can now simply tell you that white numbers don't have hit lag, with some few exceptions I will talk about later. Yellow numbers, however, do have hit lag, and in Iceborne all the orange numbers have the same amount of hit lag, no matter if belonging to the third or fourth class, while in Rise there is a clear difference if the hit response value is from 45 to 65.99, which is the third class, and from 66 onwards, which is the fourth class. This difference stays at the next topic of this video. Why is there such a difference when hitting a monster between Iceborne and Rise? Or in other words, how much do Iceborne and Rise differ when it comes to hit lag? Let's take a look at this table made by DTL Noor. This one refers to Iceborne, and we can see in the second column the speed rate multiplier that is applied when the blade hits the monster. In most of the cases it's zero, which means the weapon will freeze, will not move when we hit the monster. And in the three columns on the right, depending on the hit response value, we can see how long the hit lag will last, expressed in seconds. If we now look at the Spirit Trust and the Spirit Storm, which is the finisher of the mount, we can notice that the speed rate multiplier is not zero, but really close to it. It's 0.02. What does that mean? It means that the weapon will not freeze, will not stop when hitting the monster, but it will be heavily slowed down. In this case, since the speed rate multiplier is really close to zero, the difference between hit lag and hit stop is almost impossible to spot. In fact, we have the same feeling of our weapon being momentarily stuck when connecting the hit. Another important aspect we have to notice is that the duration of the hit lag is zero if the hit response value is from zero to 44.99, which means white numbers except from the Spirit Trust and the Spirit Storm, which have a fixed hit slow of the duration of 0.3 seconds, the highest one by far among the longsword moves in Iceborne. If we want to calculate how many frames the hit lag or hit slow will last, we simply multiply the seconds of the duration by the FPS we are playing at. So if we play at 60 FPS, 0.3 seconds means 18 frames. That's a lot, but fortunately only these two moves have such hit lag duration. All the other moves have literally less than half of it. The second longest hit lag belongs to Spirit Round Slash, which is 0.15 seconds or 9 frames at 60 FPS. Then we have Spirit Blade Attacks and Foresight Slash that have 0.1 seconds or 6 frames. The rest is below that, and include attacks that generate spirit bar when hitting a monster, like the step slash or the fate slash. Alright, talking about spirit generation when hitting a monster, did you know that in Iceborne this mechanic is connected to the hit response value? In fact, there are four different multipliers that are applied on each hit response value. In this table provided by DTL Noor, you can see that if the hit response value is from 0 to 24.99, the multiplier is 0.5, if it's from 25 to 44.99, the multiplier is 0.75, if it's from 45 to 65.99,
the multiplier is 1. And lastly, if it's 66 or higher, then the multiplier is 1.10. What does this mean? It means that if you hit a monster's body part with a step slash, for example, that generates 26% of your spirit bar, you have to multiply this number by this spirit gen multiplier. And so you can get more or less spirit bar generation depending on both where you land the hit and your current sharpness. That means you will get less spirit bar if the damage number's color is white, while if you get orange numbers you get more spirit bar. This is a mechanic that doesn't exist anymore in Rise. In fact, you get the same amount of spirit bar generation no matter where you land the hit, nor your sharpness. In other words, it is totally unrelated to the hit response value. Well, let's go back to the hit lag and let's give a look at the Rise table made always by DDL Noor. Same as in Iceborne, if the hit response value is from 0 to 44.99, there is no hit lag except for the Spirit Blade 3, first and second hits, and the Plunging Crust, which is the attack that your hunter performs when you don't press anything after you connect a Soaring Kick. Both these moves have a fixed hit slow independently of the hit response value. As stated on the top of the table, the green numbers have hit slow with a motion speed multiplier of 0.1 while the black numbers have hit lag, which means the weapon will freeze when touching the monster. We can immediately notice a big difference compared to Iceborne. Yellow numbers will have different hit lag depending on the hit response value. If this value is above 66, the hit lag increases by 50%. What this means is that every weak spot of hit zone values of 50 or higher will give you 50% more hit lag when you play with white sharpness. Consider that the weak spots for every monster in Rise are always generally above the hit zone value of 50. That means every weak spot in Rise gives you the highest hit lag value possible. Let's take a look at the highest hit lag values now. In the first position, we have the Ice Breeze Slash and the Serene Pose, with a hit lag duration of 0.35 seconds, which means 21 frames at 60 FPS. In second position, we have Spirit Reckoning and Spirit Round Slash, with a hit lag of 0.3 seconds, which is 18 frames. Spirit Blade's attacks have 0.15 seconds of hit lag, and the attacks that generate the Spirit Bar, like Step Slash or Fate Slash, have 0.15 as well. Okay, let's go back to the Hit Lag Iceborne table and pay attention to the Ice Spirit Slash hit lag duration. It lasts for 0.05 seconds which is 3 frames at 60 FPS. Now let's give a look at the Rise hit lag value. Watch the Jaspery slash row. The hit lag lasts for 0.35 seconds now, which is 21 frames. From 3 frames in Iceborne to 21 frames in Rise on the same move. Was this really necessary? Honestly, I never heard people complaining in Iceburn that the Icebury Slash felt wrong or anything. On the contrary, I heard many people stating that the Icebury Slash feels worse in Rise than Iceburn. So more hit lag doesn't mean a better feeling, right? That's why I decided to upload that video on Apex Zinogre without hit lag, to show you the difference between having 21 frames interruption on the Icebury Slash and not having them. But of course, not just the Ice Breeze Slash. Let's compare the last hit of Spirit Blade 3. In Iceborne, it is 0.1 seconds, which is 6 frames. In Rise, it's double. It lasts 0.2 seconds, which is 12 frames. Same comparison with the Spirit Round Slash. In Iceborne, it is 0.15, which is 9 frames, while in Rise, it is 0.3, which is 18 frames. Again, the double. But what really feels off is the hit lag on the basic combo attacks to generate the spirit bar. I'm talking about step slash or rising slash. We have 0.06 seconds, which is 3.6 frames in Iceburn, while in Rise we have a hit lag that lasts almost triple, 0.15 seconds, which is 9 frames. I really don't understand why such an increase of the hit lag duration was necessary of these simple moves. I understand really well that players that enjoy having a heavy hit lag when it comes to certain powerful attacks, like the True Charge Slash of the Greatsword or the Big Bang Finisher of the Hummer, 
But what is the purpose of having such hit lag on light moves such as tap slash in rise? In my opinion, it only worsens the experience, making you feel like your blade is stuck inside a monster and overall making the gameplay look clunky, especially when hitting many targets at the same time. What I personally liked more in Rise is the hit slow. I would be really happy to experience more hit slow than hit lag on most of the longsword attacks, because the feeling of the hit slow, in my opinion, is more accurate. When you cut something, you expect your blade to cut through it slowly, and not get stuck in it, right? That's why I think a reasonable amount of hit slow would make sense on longsword, but always in a moderate amount. And that's it! I hope what I explained in this video was interesting and gave you some materials to understand this mechanic better. I also hope you guys now can understand my choice of showing you that longsword can play without hit lag on Apex Xenogra. I will thank DDL Nor once again for his immense help, and with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Bye!